Hello, Clarissa Francis Dias Carneiro, and thanks for accepting my invitation for this chat for the Reproducible Research Scout YouTube channel. Uh, can you start with your introduction? Yes, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Clarissa. I am a PhD student or candidate, although we don't really have this title in Brazil, but I am a PhD candidate from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, and I am a research fellow at the BIH Quest Center for um, Responsible Research in Berlin. And I work with um, meta research in general. Cool. Uh, how do you define reproducible research and why it's important for you? For me, reproducible research is um, very generally just the ability of uh, verifying a result. And that could mean both repeating experiments or verifying repeating analysis, which is verifying the, the methods are completely described. I think we can define research reproducibility um, with, um, um, how do you say, with further adjectives to, to say methods reproducibility or results or um, conclusions reproducibility. But um, very generally, I would just say that it's just confirmation of a previous finding. And I think this is important. It's just a part of how scientific method was built and should be conducted. And just to define what science is, it should be reproducible from the start. Yeah, cool. Uh, you are part of the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative founded by the Institute to Say Health Data. Can you tell us what the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative is and a little bit of how it started? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative is a research project focused on trying to replicate at least 60 experiments from the Brazilian biomedical literature in at least three different centers, each of these experiments. So it's multi-center replication, a systematic replication effort. Um, the, the proposal for this uh, came from my PhD supervisor, who was, um, the, the idea is that we should take it into the, the evaluation of science into our own hands, and that reproducibility should be a part of the evaluation. I mean, we're so used to evaluating science from a perspective of number of publications or impact factors, and the quality and robustness of the research kind of falls behind in this uh, type of assessment. And so um, we want the uh, science in general and more specifically Brazilian science to be uh, of good quality and that would mean to be reproducible and robust. And so the idea was that we could recruit uh, biomedical researchers in laboratories up around the country to perform this sort of a self-assessment of our own science. So we maybe can describe a little bit of the process of the projects that we did a systematic review to identify what were the most common biomedical methods like laboratory techniques that are used in the country. And so we selected um, 10 of these most common methods and we opened a call for collaborators around the country. And then we further um, filtered for the methods that we had most collaborators joining. So we could also take advantage of this expertise of this network that was um, available to collaborate with us. And so we, we settled on 20 experiments from MTT assay, which is an assay to assess the cell viability, um, uh, RTQ-PCR, which is for um, quantifying gene expression. And uh, one, um, and, and 20 experiments from uh, elevated plus maze assay, which is a behavioral test done on, on mice and rats, just as like anxiety or anxiety like behavior in animals. Mm. So, yeah, the, the, the idea is that with these uh, 60 experiments, we will be able to uh, provide some sort of an estimate of how much of this uh, Brazilian science is reproducible and try to explore whether there are any factors or features of the original research or the original researchers that could somehow predict these um, outcomes of reproducibility. Very cool. Uh, what was the outcome of that? 
uh, if if it was already reported. Yeah, you know, it's ongoing actually with the pandemic. There was a lot of delay because of the labs were closed down entirely or just very much restrict with restricted access. So they could not um, make our experiments a priority. Um, so they had their own <laughs> research projects and a lot of them were actually working on COVID research from the beginning. So that was really cool. But unfortunately that meant a lot of uh, delays for us. We hope to have uh, the results by the end of this year. I'm very interested to hear your findings. So let's move a little bit for other interesting projects that you are involved with. Uh, you are one. Uh, you have been leading the reproducibility tea, uh, journal club in Brazil. Can you tell us how the reproducibility tea is organized in Brazil? Uh, yes, we started this in 2020. So the idea was that everybody was home and we should continue to discuss and continue to talk about science, even though we couldn't be in the labs. And so we did this online. Uh, different from other reproducibility journal clubs, we are not focused on any department or institution. We did the national journal club as it was online, it was easy for, for us to do it like that, but still very focused on biomedical research, right? And we did uh, one um, month, one meeting per month, and where a, anyone could present a paper, and then we would follow up with a discussion of this paper. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> um, these presenters were usually early career researchers or students. So, and and also most of our audience actually was was students, and that was really cool to to be able to to discuss these um, papers. We started with like a very traditional reading list for reproducibility team in, in general. So not so, it wasn't a journal club focused on most recent findings. It was also very much focused on classical, like reproducibility literature, if I could call it like that. And um, so for now, we just um, took a break, just so to speak. Um, as people were returning to the labs and then there was some struggle in finding new presenters and finding a time slot that could suit everyone. So the, the organizing committee was not only me, but people also from various different states and career stages also. So then defenses started to come up and, and, and how life gets. And um, so now we are hoping that the Reproducibility Journal Club in Brazil will become part of some, some larger initiative on training and education and awareness of reproducibility issues. Um, as we try to um, build the Brazilian Reproducibility Network kind of in the same um, format or general format as the UK Reproducibility Network and the German Reproducibility Network and others that are coming up in mostly in Europe, but also in other places. So you mentioned that both projects that we were previously discussing, the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative and the Reproducibility T Journal Club, they kind of uh, fast, uh, promoting the widespread of the reproducible research idea in Brazil that now is start to forming this idea of uh, open reproducibility network in Brazil. Uh, what other changes do you see on the Brazilian research landscape in terms of reproducibility or in cultural change? Mm. In general, I, I, I still see it as a big challenge. Any any kind of cultural change is, is a major challenge, but I don't think we're falling behind on international research in any kind of, in, in any, any measure really. Um, I don't think I can um, really see an impact, immediate impact of these initiatives that, um, that we were talking about. I hope with the results of the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative, we can have we can further debate on uh, on the topic. But I think there are some small changes that I could see and talk to people about. And this is not systemic. This is not necessarily changing culture, but they are changing their practices in the lab. So 
people from the reproducibility uh, journal clubs that were attending and were discussing like how to do an experiment in the best way or how to report or how to uh, manage their data. And also from our collaborators, they also received some nice feedback on how we, because we tried to make our own process so reproducible to and, and transparent mostly for these um, replication experiments. They, some people mentioned like this makes them think about how they do their own research and how they can take some of the things that we enforced in a way for, for the transparency of these replication, but they could also bring that to, to their own research and, and seeing that as beneficial. So I think that's really cool. And maybe it's not going to be a very fast or dramatic change that we can see, but I think maybe with this, students and postdocs growing in their careers that could lead the change forward and then become something more widespread. Uh, have you noticed any uh, support for the funding agencies in Brazil to reproducibility in general? Because I mentioned earlier that the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative is being funded by Instituto Serra Pileira, which is like a private uh, funder uh, in Brazil but it's not the biggest one, it's the smallest research funder in Brazil. What is your experience with the other big funders? Um, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we actually see this as a little bit of a contradiction to have a private funder sort of supporting the assessment of public funded uh, research that was done previously but we did not have very good experiences with the evaluation of the projects or of the people involved in the project um, by the this agency so of course i had a, a scholarship from the uh, cnpq which is like one of the largest funders governmental funders but that type of uh, scholarship is not really linked to any project. So it's linked to the graduate program and they can do their own selection process and assign to students. But um, whenever we had applied for postdoc positions or this productivity um, grants for, for principal researchers, um, we, we got mixed feedbacks, I think, from this, from the reviewers of these uh, grants. So, yeah, but but then from mixed reviews, maybe this is also uh, in, impacted by the fact that Brazilian science is um, suffering from so much budget cuts that if it's a mixed evaluation, then it's not funded, or maybe. Um, we can't really say that because we, are, we already have a funding from a private funder, which is kind of rare still because these funders are so small and so few. Uh, but this is still um, seen as some sort of a positive thing that we, we have this. I, I can't really say, and I definitely cannot say that this is the position of the major funders, like institutional position. But this is the feedback that we got from reviewers that um, it's really cool, but it's not uh, original or it's not important. And we should be trying to fix some biological yeah. Yeah, issues. Yeah. The, the importance of reproducibility, as you mentioned at the beginning, is to the uh, verification of science and building uh, or uh, confirmation of the knowledge, but it's not what usually is being funded by general, in general, the funders, which is like new discovery uh, by researchers. Uh, mm -hmm. Our time is running a little bit out. Uh, there is any other interesting project that you want to share with our audience? Mm. So uh, there are two spin-off projects from the Brazilian, uh, or actually one spin-off and one a project that preceded the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative, but it's a, like a hackathon, a meta-research project. It's about to um, close actually the 
the um, I'm sorry the <laughs> the the dates for applying the application sorry and the um, and the other is the the BRISA, the Brazilian Reproducibility Initiative for systematic reviews and meta analysis which is also opening up for a, a, a free and online course on systematic research and meta analysis for preclinical researchers so I think that's really cool and uh, um, another way to um, reevaluate and improve science. And so uh, uh, maybe I can share the links. We, also. Yes, we will include the link in the description of the video. Okay. Uh, thank you, Clarissa. It was a pleasure to speak with you. And I hope that you have a good day and big success with your uh, PAD. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice talk to you. Bye.